Hello there and welcome to the last video in our introduction to the reference designation system series. In this short video we're going to take a look at the best practices and rules of from, uh, from within the industry. This video is a bit more segmented but you can take a look at the timestamps here below to see where we are. Without further ado, please join me. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at today is the object occurrence versus object individual. RDS only designates the occurrences of objects. The occurrence then holds the object individual. Let's take a look at how that looks like. So for example here we have a playing field with a lot of players on it. These players have different kinds of roles. So we have the goalkeeper, the center mid, the center back and so on. RDS can only see the role of the player. So for example here the goalkeeper. We can then take an individual Peter Smigel here and put him in on the goalkeeper's place and he will fulfill that role. At some point Peter Smigel is going to be retired. But that's no issue because we can just take his son Kasper Smigel and put him in instead. The RDS stays the same. Another example here we have a system breakdown and at some point here we will find our motor equal MAA1. This is the occurrence of the motor. We can then take an individual and put it, that in on its place. So here we have an, an individual with a supplier number. And it, it, that will fulfill uh, the role of a motor. At some point that motor is going to be retired. But that's no issue because we will just replace it. The reference destination stays the same. It will also be called equal MAA1. When that motor retires, we will again swap in a new motor. And the new motor will get the same reference, de reference destination. So we will have a stable reference destination throughout the life cycle of our system. The next thing we are going to discuss is the number of system elements that we normally find within a system. Do we normally find one system element within a system or do we normally find 100 system elements within a system? Well, we recommend to keep it between 5 and 25 system elements. If you find yourself with more than 25 system elements, we normally divide it into two systems. If you find yourself with less than five system elements within a system, they normally belong to another system. We do this to create a better clarity and better structure in our overall system breakdowns. Another problem that we encounter a lot is the ownership principle. So for example, if we have a system here, which consists of a supplying system, some receiving systems and a transfer system in between them. If we have a quite simple transfer system, for example, just some pipelines, they will probably contain less than five system elements. And according to the latest rule, it should belong to one of the other systems here. So which one should we pick? We have a few options. Option number one, a transfer system should belong to the supplying system. Option number two, the transfer system should belong to the receiving system. Option number three, a transfer system should always be considered its own system. So take a look at the three options here, pause the video and maybe give it a thought of your own. The correct answer is they are in fact all of them correct. 81346 does not contain any specific rule on which one to pick. However, we do recommend that you pick one of them and stick to it to ensure a uniform design in your system. And we recommend option number two. A transfer system should always belong to the receiving system. Let's take a look at an example. So here we have a lamp. That's definitely the receiving system of power from a supplying system, which is a power supply system. In between, we have a cable, the transport system. To which system does the cable belong? Well, here it definitely makes sense to think of the cable as part of the lamp. If we remove the lamp, we also remove the cable. So the new standard also introduces uh, new ideas of how to approach the tag itself. What we often see is a traditional tag is fixed, it's locked, it contains the same amount of letters and same amount of numbers. The new approach to tagging allows for a much more open and flexible structure. We do this to address any kinds of abstraction level that we need. Furthermore, we also see that people often tend to put meaning into numbers. So from 1 to 100 means one thing, from 101 to 200 means another thing, so on and so forth. 
People do this for two kinds of reasons. One is to add recognizability and readability, and the other is a need to subdivide into subtypes. Well, both of these things are actually fixed in the new standard. We get the recognizability and readability from the one, two, and three letter codes. I always know if I'm speaking about a main system, a technical system, or a component system. Furthermore, if we need to subdivide into subtypes, well, the new type aspects which we introduced in the last video allows me to make as many subtypes as we need. RDS 81.3.46 also introduces a new approach to aspects. Let's take a quick history lesson to learn what we are talking about. So in the 1980s, it was quite common to mix the different kinds of aspects. So for example here, we have an overall function, a1, the location, plus p1, and then lastly the component, minus k1, which was combined into one complete reference designation. However, people find out that this was not really stable. If we move our component, suddenly the complete reference designation will change. So we need to actually divide the reference designation so the location is not part of it. And that's the same kind of idea which have stuck with RDS us also up until 2009. We do not recommend to mix aspects into one reference designation. The older method has some pros. Well, it fits well with most of older IT system. And electrical engineers also find themselves comfortable with this kind of thought. However, other kinds of engineering fields does not really find themselves comfortable with this kind of system thinking. It also does not really support system thinking in that we cannot really break this down. And uh, it also reinforces this older idea that we are talking about an object individual versus an object occurrence. And RDS can only see the occurrence of the object. So what do we recommend? We recommend that you define the aspects that you need in order to designate your system. So for example, you can make a product breakdown, you can also make a functional breakdown and lastly a location breakdown of your system and keep the aspects separate. We then relate the structures together in order to tell that this function is realizing this object which is located at this location. 81346 part 1 actually contains the general syntax on how to express this. It's quite simple. We just have the first reference de designation the relation and then the last reference designation. When we utilize this to its fullest potential, we have the option to create an overall reference model of how different models, how different viewpoints, and how different structures speak together. This is a bit more advanced RDS and we'll take you through that in our next video segments.